All right, what is happening, one and all? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well today. I really do hope that. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video, which is something a little bit different. I want to talk about whether Frank Lampard can win the Premier League whilst managing Chelsea Football Club. It's an interesting question. Chelsea are used to winning titles, usually via bringing in sort of, I guess, trophy-laden mercenary managers. Now, there's no disrespect to Jose Mourinho or Antonio Conte, etc. It's just the way things work. Chelsea have brought in big names that generally have no, I don't know, affection or connection to Chelsea, which is just the way the club's worked the last 15 years. And they've won. So the bar's high. Chelsea do expect to win. They hold themselves in high regard. Guard. I think they're still the most successful English team in this century in terms of major honours. But of course, with Frank Lampard, it's a little bit different. He's a really inexperienced coach, um, but unlike his predecessors, Frank Lampard is, um, has an incredible connection with Chelsea Football Club. In many ways, he represents and personifies what Chelsea is, certainly in its latter years as a club. Uh, in terms of the never dies and the success and the winning. Frank Lampard is kind of that manifested and it's different for Chelsea now because Chelsea have a manager that would genuinely put the club before himself and this is a first for the Blues. But that's all very well and good with sentiment. Chelsea's top scorer, arguably greatest ever player, managing the football club. A superb connection with the academy, the youth, the fan base and the values of the South West London club. Now that won't last forever. Sure, it's a lot of Chelsea fans dream to have Frank Lampard coaching the club, but the club still needs to win and Frank Lampard probably knows that more than anyone. I actually imagine if Lampard thought at some point that he couldn't win with Chelsea, he'd walk away. He wouldn't like take a paycheck or try and get himself fired with severance pay or something like that. Do you know what I mean? So let's talk about it. Can Frank Lampard win the Premier League with Chelsea Football Club? Well, first off, you have to talk about the Premier League's current landscape, the current climate, what's going on in the Premier League. And you know, to look at that, you have to look at where the benchmark set at the moment and Liverpool and City have done that. Now, first off, Man City getting 100 points, winning the tr domestic treble, incredible, like they looks like they've developed a monopoly on the league, but to be honest, they look like they've dropped off. It just shows that anything can happen to any team. Sure, they've still been incredible this season to a degree, but they've sort of played to a level where in any other season, there could be a title race on. The fact of the matter is, the quality of the Premier League this campaign is very, very low indeed. But Liverpool have been outstanding. I don't want to take anything away from Liverpool because they've been like an incredible machine this season, sort of almost unprecedented, just almost weird. But in terms of the competition, I don't think the Premier League's been this week since when maybe Leicester won it. Um, a few years ago, which uh, obviously Liverpool are a lot better than Leicester. So what's the question here? The question is, what's the competition going to be doing in the next few years? City is hugely up in the air at the moment due to the sort of controversy with UEFA. Is Pep going? Is Pep staying? Are the players going? Are the players staying? Do they have Champions League? Don't they have Champions League? There's a lot of uncertainty around Manchester City that makes you think you don't know if they're a dead cert to be going for the title every season, certainly for the next two or three years. When it comes to Liverpool, it's a little bit different. They look like they've been really sensibly building an incredible machine. Um, <laughs> like, it's, it's unfathomable, really. It's superb. It's a superbly run club. The way they got Klopp in, the way they waited for their, you know, their first targets. Virgil van Dijk, a lot of people sort of raised their eyebrows when they paid that money for him. But it's the man they wanted, it was part of the project. They waited, they paid the money. Look what's happened, it's paid dividends. Same with the goalkeeper, they needed a goalkeeper. They spent loads of money on the right goalkeeper. And genuinely, I mean, Fabinho took time to come in, but he's been good. Regardless to what you think of Minamino's performances so far, he was a snip in terms of how much he cost. Andy Robertson at left back, bringing in Trent Alexander-Arnold at right back. I think he's from the academy. Just so much sensible business and uh, implementation around their starting eleven that's built this incredible team. So uh, it's going to be hard for any football club to match what Liverpool are doing, including themselves, to be honest. Just to drop two points all season, 
I don't really have any words for it, to be honest. I mean, they've already conceded more goals than Jose Mourinho's Chelsea when he uh, set that record. I think they conceded 15 goals all season or something incredible. So defensively, they concede goals, but they just win games. And for me, this winning games at all costs, it kind of comes, I think, with an emotional drain, I think. When you're not systemically sort of bulldozering teams like Manchester City was, and you're just getting over the line via one goal, uh, maybe the rub of the green. I'm not I don't subscribe to this Liverpool thing But do you know what I mean? It all just seems like it's meant to be happening for Liverpool And that's because they've got the mark of champions again. No disrespect to the club I'm just not sure that, that kind of thing is sustainable for long periods Sure, they might do amazing business in the summer and bring in the right players to just continue being excellent but there's just something for me that seems like, sure, they're just meant to be winning at the moment. But when you've got this sort of sensation of they're just meant to be winning, that doesn't seem like a sustainable model. Especially when we've seen them concede goals. You know, they've lost twice in the Champions League this season. Again, I don't know if that is further testament to the Premier League being weak this season. Um, because both teams that have beaten them in Napoli and Atletico Madrid were both in their own sort of clubs in crisis in their own sort of ways. Do you know what I mean? So the fact how they rallied and beat Liverpool when they're having poor seasons by their own standards just shows that they can be beaten essentially. So that's me talking about the opposition and really is those two. Sure Leicester are gonna look to strengthen but the other teams in and around could be in the same position as Chelsea Football Club. Now, Frank Lampard was hamstrung by many things at the beginning of this season. Again, something that I reiterate often, he lost 49% of his Premier League goal involvements from Eden Hazard without being able to replace him. Obviously, he just moved in a bunch of academy products and couldn't make a signing because they had a transfer ban. Frank Lampard himself has reiterated frustration of not being able to bring in uh, players in January, even when they had the ban lifted because the club couldn't get the targets over the line that they wished, so they're gonna have to hold out to the summer. Not only that, he's done a lot of changes stylistically. Uh, he's tried out a few different things and it should not go under the carpet how Frank Lampard himself is a very, very inexperienced manager. We can't, we can use that to criticize him, but at the same time, we can't use that to criticise him because he will inherently progress and learn on the job because he's, what, 18, 19, 20 months into this part of his career as a football manager. Do I think Frank Lampard will get better? Um, I'm inclined to say yes because he's notoriously a very, very intelligent man, one of the most intelligent men in football in terms of having a high IQ. Uh, he speaks very well. He's very media savvy. He understands the club and what the club want to do. He's got a very open line of communication between Roman Abramovich, Marina Granovskaya, people in and around him like Petr Cech, the sort of, you know, when they got the gang back together and all that sort of stuff. So it's set up for progress, but to make progress now, Chelsea do need reinforcements in terms of signings. Again, you can't really judge Frank Lampard till he's had the opportunity to go, right, I want this player, this player, this player, because I'm trying to play this style of football. Now, we know Frank Lampard likes a 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1, and a 3-4-3 formation, as well as playing a 4-4-2 out of possession. So he does do stuff. People are confused a lot of the time to see what he is and isn't doing, but he's trying different things with these players that he's just sort of inherited. So really he needs a season, maybe a couple of seasons, transfer windows and the ability to settle and find out what he needs before world football can really judge him on what he's doing and his managerial capabilities. Fortunately, in this time of dominance from Manchester City, from Liverpool, with a transfer ban, he's afforded this opportunity to develop something and grow as a manager and basically demonstrate what he's doing to the club, the fan base and indeed world football. So what would Chelsea have to do to win the Premier League? Well, first off, they'd obviously have to strengthen problem positions, which would of course be left back, arguably centre back, uh, probably a new striker to help or maybe take the spot of Tammy Abraham. And they need that superstar up front to replace Eden Hazard. People forget that Hazard in many ways did carry Chelsea for a long, long time. And that's what made Chelsea so good. So if Chelsea want to remain good, they're gonna have to build. The club has to nurture a project just as they did with Jürgen Klopp. It was a long-term project, he wasn't good immediately. The club believed in him and they gave him time, resources, and faith, essentially. Now, City did a sort of something similar with uh, Pep Guardiola. Obviously, Pep Guardiola is just 
arguably the best manager in the world, but in terms of how they spent years implementing a system at the club that would nurture Pep Guardiola's plan well at Manchester City, they spent a while, time, again, resources in making sure that would work. So it was almost, um, you know, preempting his arrival, but with Klopp, Liverpool did it once he arrived. They were patient with him and they gave him everything he needed. If Chelsea are going to develop a long-term systemic mode of success at Chelsea Football Club, they're going to have to do something similar. Now, people might say, right, we'll do that with a Klopp, a Guardiola, you know, a, a manager that's proven themselves. But they've obviously looked at Frank Lampard and thought, well, this guy is going to give everything for the club due to his connections. And we believe he has, you know, the intellect and psychological profile to develop into a wonderful manager. And, you know, it's perfect in terms of PR and you know he's never going to throw the club under the bus or he'll never protest like Mourinho or Conte by throwing out, you know, poor, trying to throw games or paying poor players because it's just not, you know, it's just not what he'd do. It remains to be seen if he can win the Premier League, but I can't assess it personally until I have a real sample size to assess because so far this season he's rallied the players on big derbies uh, against playing its rivals. We've seen pretty impressive performances in terms of attacking, free-flowing, uh, expressive football from the youngsters. And we've seen incredible naiveties and often systemic flaws, but perhaps ones in hindsight. For example, the Bayern Munich loss, I think everyone accepts that was a gulf in quality in terms of where they are, where Chelsea are, the players they have, the players Chelsea have. But prior to that, I think everyone agreed that Frank Lampard did the right tactical setup. It's just in hindsight, it didn't work. So there's going to be loads of teething issues along the way, and it's going to be a big learning curve. I want to say Frank Lampard can win the Premier League with Chelsea. Once the club invest, as they've done for previous managers, got decent players, I think he's got enough ideas. But more importantly, I think Frank Lampard is open to changing his ideas. He's not as dogmatic as, say, Maurizio Sarri, or indeed Antonio Conte. He's open to changing everything. He's open to listening to his coaching staff and developing and learning himself as a coach. I don't think he'll find a particular system and just stick to it. I think Chelsea will constantly be analyzing the climate of football and trying to find out what works and switching to that. Well, what do you guys think? I want to get everyone's thoughts and opinions. I know it's a pretty, like, people are split on Frank Lampard. A lot of people think he's doing as well as he should be. A lot of people think he's overachieving considering all the uh, factors pre-season that kind of hamstrung Chelsea. Let's not forget, Chelsea were favourites for, like, eighth in the Premier League pre-season. Um, and then some people, you know, just think he'll, he can't cut it at Chelsea. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts and opinions. Get down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on that. Also, if you've enjoyed the video today, guys, please do like the video. Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you are indeed new to the channel, why not follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, boys and girls. You lot enjoy the football. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby